Studying at university requires you to have a laptop, but studying architecture at university requires a different kind of laptop. Architecture students need a laptop that has the capacity to run 2D and 3D softwares alongside very, very high usage because us architecture students spend a lot of time on our laptops and we pretty much destroy them, not literally. <laughs> so in today's video, I'm going to dive into the exact specifications needed for an architecture laptop. I'm going to find the best architecture laptop and I'm going to buy it. So sit back, relax and enjoy. So just to give you a bit of context about myself, before we dive into the computers, I've been studying architecture for four years now. I studied for three years to get my architecture degree, and I've been working as a part one architectural assistant for the past year for a practice in London. So when I started out at university studying architecture, I started with a MacBook Pro, which I soon realized was a poor idea, and I needed to upgrade pretty quickly. And so I picked up the HP NV Core Intel i7 8th gen with 16 gig RAM, and this was probably the best thing that I could have bought at the time. And I've done absolutely everything on this laptop. I've done all my 3D modeling, all of my podcasting, all my video editing, all of my rendering, everything on this laptop. And I've had it for three years now. However, it's a bit rusty now. It's getting a bit old. It's slowing down on me. And so we've got to upgrade. Just a disclaimer, I am no IT technician. I'm doing this video from an architecture student point of view, looking for the best laptop I can find within a budget. There are specific components that make up a laptop. You've got your CPU, which is a central processing unit. This is the brains of the computer and are responsible for processing and executing instructions. RAM allows you to run applications alongside one another. For example, you could have Photoshop, Revit, and YouTube open, and the more RAM you have, the better your computer will handle that load. And this is where RAM comes in really useful if you're running multiple 3D softwares at once. You then have your storage, which is either SSD or HDD, so that is solid state drive or hard disk drive. GPU, which is a graphics processing unit, which is essentially your graphics card. And this is really important if you're looking to produce high quality renders and hyper realistic renders, and you're looking to use software such as Lumion. You then have the specific size of the laptop and the weight that comes with that. And then you have the price and my budget for today's laptop is going to be £2,000. And this will just give you a good indication of what type of laptops you can get with good specifications, but within a budget. In order to buy the best laptop for an architecture student within a budget, we need to know the specific system requirements for architecture softwares. And that is why I'm going to dive into the system requirements of four specific softwares, AutoCAD, Revit, Rhino and Lumium to give us a good idea of the specs required. So to look at AutoCAD 2022, it says that the minimum requirement would be 2.5 to 2.9 gigahertz processor, but the recommended is three plus. The memory required is a minimum of eight gigabytes, but the recommended is 16 gig. And then the display card, so the graphics card, would be a basic one gigabyte GPU with 29 gigabytes bandwidth. And the recommended is a four gigabyte GPU with 106 gigabytes bandwidth. Moving forward into Rhino or Rhinoceros, the system requirements is an eight gigabyte RAM, but more is recommended. And an OpenGL 4.1 capable video card is recommended. And moving into Revit 2021, the minimum entry level configuration for a CPU would be a single or multi-core Intel or AMD equivalent. And the minimum RAM is eight gigabytes. But for more of a balanced performance and more of a balanced price, you're looking at a single or multi-core Intel processor once again or amd equivalent but a 16 gigabytes ram then finally if we look into lumium 11 this will give us a good idea of how powerful our gpu will need to be so over here on lumium it says the minimum requirement cpu is an intel or amd processor scoring a single thread cpu mark of 2000 or higher system memory ram of 16 gig or more but most importantly here it says the graphics card would have to have a GPU scoring a G3D mark of 7,000 or higher with an up-to-date driver. 
You're probably thinking, what exactly is a G3D mark? And I was thinking exactly the same. But to put it simply, it gives us an indication on how powerful the graphics card is. And over here on the Passmark software website, you have a full list of all of the graphics card with its G3D mark next to it. So typically the higher the G3D mark, the higher the price. And this solely comes down to personal preference and what you use your laptop for. If you are someone who does really high quality and hyper-realistic 3D rendering, and you want to use a software like Lumion, you'll probably want to look for a GPU pretty high, obviously a lot higher than 7,000. But personally for me, I don't really use 3D rendering programs too much. So I'm not going to stress too much about finding a GPU with a really, really high G3D mark score. I'll probably look for something that is going to be over the 7,000, so over the minimum. But I'm not going to stress about spending loads and loads of money on a really high quality GPU. So to summarize the minimum requirements needed for a laptop to study in architecture, you need a CPU with a minimum of 2,000 CPU mark. So typically you're looking at a core Intel i7 or an AMD equivalent. You need a minimum RAM of 16 gigabytes. You could probably push it and have 8 gig, but I would probably go for a 16 gig for sure. Storage, I would potentially opt for an SSD, so a solid state drive, as this is a lot faster than a hard drive, but you could also have a hard drive on the side as well to store some of your work. So if you've got a hard drive on the side, I wouldn't stress about having too high of an SSD, but look at something within your budget. Your GPU would want a G3D mark of a minimum of 7,000, like we've just explored. And the screen size, obviously you've got your 13 inch, you've got 15 inch, but personally I'd opt for a 15 inch, as a bigger screen is better for obviously working on 3D softwares and rendering programs. The bigger screen, the better, but obviously don't go too big because it can become a bit of an inconvenience if it's too heavy and you can't really fit it in your backpack, etc. Now that we have all the specifications for our laptop, all we have to do now is find one. Okay, today is the day. The XPF 15 has arrived, the Dell XPF 15. I've been waiting around three weeks for this to arrive and I'm excited. Finger. So if we open up, wow, look at that. Got the XPF logo up here, chargers, etc. Bingo. After a couple of days researching, I finally decided on the XPF 15, the Dell XPF 15, and this thing is beautiful. I wanted to find a laptop that was going to be right for me personally. I wanted something that had a good aesthetics as well, that didn't look too thick and clunky and wasn't too heavy. And I thought this laptop looked great alongside the great specifications that we needed. So to run through the specifications of this XPF 15, we have an 11th generation Intel Core i7 processor, which has a CPU mark of 21,921. It has 32 gigabytes of RAM, a GeForce RTX 3050 Ti 4GB GPU, which has a GPU score of 9604, 512GB of SSD storage, it is 15.6 inches with a full HD screen, and it cost me £1,776. And I'm not going to lie, I'm seriously happy with it. I do like it. So I probably could have got something around the similar specs a little bit cheaper, but like I mentioned, I really like the look of this laptop. The screen is lovely and big, and I just wanted to spend that extra bit of money on something that I really like the look of. So to conclude the video, here is the Dell XPF 15, which is arguably the best laptop to get for an architecture student under a budget, and it's absolutely great. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace.